Okay, so now we've got a nice way to control access to our application based on a user's role with our custom middleware and our custom methods on our user model. The next thing I want to look at is the user creation process via the admin panel. So at the moment, I showed you how to do this from scratch and create your own custom validators so an admin user can create a new user. But as I said at the start of this series, this series is going to be focused on Laravel Fortify. And now I'm going to do a refactor on this creation process and refactor it to use something called Laravel Fortify Actions. Now this feature of Fortify isn't really documented and I've not really seen anyone else talking about it. But these actions are actually really powerful and come with Fortify out of the box. And these handle a lot of the login and registration boilerplate code for you. All you need to do is just pass it in the data. So let me just show you what I mean. So if you come under app, you'll notice there's a folder called actions. And then inside of here is another folder called Fortify. And then inside of here, there's various Fortify actions. So there's only a few at the moment, but imagine over time as this package matures, there'll be even more actions inside of here that you can hook into, into your application to save you writing all the code. As you can see here, the top one is something called create new user. Let's just take a look at this. And then this class simply has one method on it called create. And it takes an input of type array, and then it runs some validation rules on it. And then finally returns a created user. So we can actually leverage this now in our own code. All we need to do is pass in an array of data, specifically a name, email, password. And also because of the password validation rules, it needs a password confirmation field. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is put that password confirmation field on our create form because currently we don't have that in place. So we just come over to our create page. You can see we don't have a password confirmation field. We only have a password field. So if we come down to resources, views, admin, users, and then inside of partials, we have our form for creating users. So I'm just going to open up that partial. So you can see down here now in our partial, we are checking whether this is a create form or not, because we don't want to be doing this on the edit. So I'm just going to copy down this password and all of the associated divs as well. I'm just going to change this from password to password confirm. And then inside of the name for the input, I'm going to do password underscore confirmation. I'm just going to copy that for the label as well. And then also in the errors. And then also in the error here. And I'm just going to give this a unique ID, even though we're not actually doing anything with it at the moment. Okay, that should be all we need for this. Let's just give this a refresh now in the browser. You can see we have the password confirm input field here as well. So the next thing we need to do is modify our store method on our admin user controller. So it uses the fortify action rather than using the custom code we made in a previous video. So up under app, HTTP, controllers, under admin, we want to open up the user controller. Then inside of here, we want to come down to our store method. Now these top two lines we aren't going to be using anymore, but I'm going to leave them in there so you've got them in the code when you download it at the end of the series. So I'm just going to comment them out for now. You can delete them. It's completely up to you. And then under here, what I'm going to do is create a new instance of that create new user action and then pass in the data. So I'm just going to create a new variable here called new user. And that's going to be equal to that create new user action. And again, if your ID doesn't pull in the classes automatically at the top of your file, make sure you use app actions fortify create new user back down here now now we have a new instance of this action we can simply call that create method so i can say user and i'm going to set this user equal to that new user action and we're going to call that create method on there like i said earlier in the video this is expecting in an array of data to populate the database with so what we can do here we can just simply say request or and then that will convert everything in the request into an array. Now the action isn't actually going to be using all the data. It's only going to be using the name, email, password, and password confirm. So if you wanted, you could just restrict it just to them fields. So to do that, instead of saying all, you can do only, and then you can pluck out the fields that you only want to pass in. So you can do name, 
email, password, and password confirmation. Now again, both of these methods would work exactly the same, but I'll leave that down to you which one you want to use within your application. I'm just going to leave it with the request only for now. So as we've seen in this create method, what this actually does, it returns us a new instance of the created user. So everything else remains the same. So we have our new user created here using the Laravel 45 create action. And then we can carry on with our roles relationship on that user and carry on with the sync. So everything else stays the same. It's only these two lines and these two lines that change. And then finally, now because we're using the fortify action, we need to remove the password set attribute off the user model. So under app models, let's open up our user model and then just come down to this set password attribute. And you can just remove that. I'm just going to comment it out here. So you've still got it in the source code when you download the code at the end of the video. So I'm just going to save on this now and then let's test this out in the browser. So here I've just filled in this form with some dummy data and I'm just going to submit on this form. And you can see there now that has created our user in exactly the same way as our previous code did, only this time using the Laravel Fortify actions. So I'll just head over into that create form again and I'm just going to hit submit on the empty form just to make sure the validation is working correctly that's coming from the Fortify action. And you see there our validation error messages come back. So we know the validation inside of that Laravel Fortify action is working correctly. And then that's it. That's all we need to do to create a user using the Laravel Fortify actions. In the next video, I'm going to start delving into testing. Now, testing is a massive topic that probably warrants a complete series on its own. But I'm going to just give you some basics so you can get going on how to start using some integration tests within this application. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit subscribe on my YouTube channel so you get future updates. I also have a Patreon page. Any donations or tips that you can give me on this are much appreciated. And also I'm over on Twitter. If you can give me a follow to help spread the word about my channel, that would be much appreciated. All the links are down in the description.